what's going on and I'm back with yet another video and I want to talk about something that's been really irking really irking my damn mind and it's about racism I'm so sick and tired of hearing about racism I'm like every day somebody is uh, got something to say about race so I got a white real good friend of mine you know he an older white guy I had to clear his ass, clear him, because he went to saying, and we still good friends, it's just that <laughs> he laughed, he laughed at what I was saying, because he basically brought up this whole black on black crime, and how black lives matter only care about when somebody kills somebody like them, but you know, he was still trying to remain political and not make me upset, which that wasn't going to make me upset, because you know, he one of those types that speak his mind. Well, so I had to shut him down. I said, you been watching cable lately? So he looked real dumbfounded at me like, huh? I said, dude, you have over 130 different crime shows on ID Discovery. And that's just what I know of. I said, man, you got forensic files, deadly women. You have country fried murders. You have Miami Vice. You have, um, did I miss a snap? <laughs> who, who, the, who the fuck did I marry? Uh, and I'm just, and, and I'm just basically naming about five or six. What? Uh, love thy neighbor. My friends from, from hell. Now you got different spinoffs, so different shows all showcasing the same thing, murder. How many more? Uh, how many more spins on murder does it have to take for you for me to get the hint? I say, damn. And see, I love watching crime shows anyway. That's how come I know about it. How many of them? Are. I don't count it. It's literally that many crime shows on one channel, and they still developing more. What about what about this uh, show on cable uh, on ID Discovery called The Dead Talk to Me? Now, this is supposed to showcase women that was murdered and was speaking beyond the grave. Detectives were solving their murders beyond the grave because the spirits was talking to them. All of them is white. All of them is white. So I was telling him, he was laughing because he really didn't know what to say. He was just kidding himself laughing at me. And I was telling him, I say, see, now how many, now how many cable shows we got on air making sport and making light of our murders? I'll wait. Yeah, it happened in the hood. Yeah, it happened in the hood. Because you got a lot of disenfranchised, poor people. It ain't just a whole bunch of blacks in, um, in the hood, too. You got your whites in the hood. You got your Hispanics. You got your Mexicans in the hood. You know. But I had to let him know. You barking up the wrong tree. Because for what I'm seeing and for what I'm witnessing, you know, y'all take 911 and murder is a damn joke. That's a joke to y'all. Y'all up there, the, the father done stop your ex-wife from about three different restaurants. Y'all in the car drinking like a fish. You got your pistol in your hand. You're waiting for her to come out the third restaurant. You contemplating whether you should take her out or whether you should let her live. Now you done emptied the clip on the boyfriend and her and then got the nerve to go run and get something to eat. You know, police kicked down the door. And you on the sofa up there for the masturbate. Come on now. Come on. So, and then you don't have a bunch of us pretending to be doctors going to the hospitals injecting nitroglyceride. Nitroglyceride inside the patient's arm talking about some uh they didn't need to suffer no more. Man, I was man, he was rolling. He was rolling because you know me and him don't take each other seriously like that. But I but he did understand where I was coming from. You know, I'm talking I'm telling you, man, y'all got a Dr. Kevorkian. I ain't never seen a black person going around being no damn um death death angel. Y'all had a Dr. Kevorkian and he was killing for about 20 or 30 years. Hell, it had to take not too long ago, I think the turn of the early two thousands before they even catch him. If I'm not mistaken, it took a long time to catch Dr. Kevorkian. You know, 
So I had to tell him all that data statistics that he be listening to and you know, and that's another thing, you can't really base all that you that you hear on the internet as factual. You know, crime statistics crime statistics and data is one thing because you got a lot of people that will go on the FBI website and they'll take it for you know for for Bible truth. You'll get a person, you'll get a person that'll take what the FBI website say, they data and, and just take it as gospel. You gotta remember now. Isn't it crimes that go unreported all the time? Everybody don't catch every crime that's happening. It's just impossible. There's too many people in the country and there's too many people in the world. You cannot compile what the FBI database is. It's just a, it's just a wide, broad, it's just a broad search and a broad review of the st statistics of the crime that happened in the area. It's not it's not all the crimes they had because if it was that if, that if that was the case a lot of people would be, be afraid a lot of people would be afraid you know but like i say he all right he a cool guy it's just that sometimes a lot of people let what they see on tv get in their mind and before you know it they, they already formed an opinion and they formed a huge opinion so Whenever they form an opinion like that, you have to you have to clear them. You have to check them with factual, factual data. That way, they can't come and say, well, this and that and the other. And at this point, I'm just rambling now. I just had to stand uh, underneath this tree and get some cool breeze before I hightail it back home. You know? But I am so damn hot. Now, like I say, and I'm sick and tired of them. Y'all just race shit. Damn. You know, I ain't never seen, I ain't never seen nothing like that. You know. And another thing is too, I want to say this while, while while I'm on camera. Anybody that was born in the '70s and the '80s and the '90s, you really haven't really experienced racism. You really haven't. And I said that to say that. Nobody, we have an experience with somebody that was born in the 60s and back with experiencing racism. You know, the closest one I know that experienced racism was my mom. I was born in 1985. Hadn't had not one incident. The only, the only thing that come close, the only thing that come close is probably a homeless guy calling me uh, a black ass something because I ain't giving no money. But he was out of his mind crazy anyway. And he knew not to walk up on me because I was waiting for him to chase me. I even flagged him down. I said, I said, come get your money. I was going to take good care of him when he walked up on me. But, you know, he had a lot of sense. Even though he had like he ain't had none. He had a lot of sense. But yeah, you know. So he laughed and gave me a bill. And we were, you know, we were talking. And he said, I respect the movement. I respect black people and everything He's like that. Yeah, I'm going around saying that we commit a whole bunch of crimes. And y'all motherfuckers got whole cable network shows dedicated to y'all killing like it ain't nothing i mean glorifying glorifying your murder your children your families your spouses i mean come on what's that guy name is uh he got thin glasses i forgot he he's a he's a white fella he was in prison for cutting up his daughters and all that kind of stuff you know yeah. I don't want to get it. I don't really want to get into that because somebody, some old uh, nice person, going to decide that maybe I need to tie him out and go flag my video. But I don't care, you know. But yeah, a lot of people like to sensationalize these murders. But all right, that does it. I'm getting tired of talking. <laughs> I was your host, Priceless Row. Until next time, everybody, peace and continue to have a good one. Later.